Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the chosen. Happy Tuesday. Speaking of chews. So, sorry, I'm starting again. Welcome back to the toast and happy Jews Day. And speaking of my favorite Jewess, it's Jacqueline Follet. It's two's Jews. It's two's Jews. That's for day, I'm sure. It's actually three's Jews because Brew is here for the moment podcasting with us. Brew has entered his teenager era. Like now mm. when we wake up in the morning, like Brew stays in bed. Brew can't rise and grind before 9 a.m., Waking up in the morning. He takes his breakfast in bed now. He's just super cozy. And he's always like, we, when we get up to do like a 6 a.m. bottle, like he always gets up at that time and expects his breakfast at that time. But these days- Oh, it's like, like we're up. Yeah, no, like, oh, great. I've been waiting. These days, he's the last one to rise in the house. Isn't that interesting? You know what? They really, they grow up so fast. They grow up so fast. So enjoy this time while you have it. La her to Lou. How's row? So yesterday, you know, we were hoping for an accident-free day. It didn't happen. We already started the day with an accident, though, you said. Yesterday, yeah. Today, we have no accidents. So the day is young. We need a board. Zero days without accidents so far. But, Claudia, your expectations are so high. No, no, by the way, I don't get discouraged, but, like, I'm, that's the goal I'm working towards, like a day without accidents. For sure. I feel like... It should be a kind of a while before that happens. Do you are you using wee wee pads? No, and it shouldn't be a while. It should be, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a week, because he was you know we dropped him off at a trainer for for a couple of weeks and he was having no accidents. He was in a routine now, of course, there. A change of environment is expected. You for know such we're a still young learning. Pup. We're still learning one another. So I'm not feeling discouraged, but that is a goal. I think when training, like it's good to have goals. That's my goal. Okay. I love your goal. And I am rooting for Ro. Now, speaking of goals, yesterday I was dressed like a slut, like the whore of Babylon. Today I'm giving athletic. Explain yourself. You're done being a slut. It wasn't the life for you. Um, it was the life for me, actually. I really enjoyed kind of the slutty era I was in yesterday, just sort of walking down the street, everybody's eyes on turdy. But, you know, I dress for the day. Yesterday required me to be, you know, whore-esque. Today is giving athleticism because after we wrap up the toast, I'm doing something insane. I'm wearing a sports bra. Okay, what is she doing? I mean, she could be going to a workout class. She could be training with Hillary. She could be meeting with Tom, the running coach. She's doing 5K training. Today I have my very first in-person like training with a running coach. Like we're literally running like outside, question mark. I didn't even know what to wear. I was so confused. Like I've never worked out outside in my life, let alone run. So I'm wearing a sports bra. I'm wearing my Reebok leggings, my Nike socks, my Hoka's, and an aloe yoga t-shirt What with this merch on top. I needed something because it's chilly. It's not just but I merch, wanted- shirty. It's vintage. I wanted something that gave, like, you know, that vintage collegiate athleticism energy. Gym. And I thought this Heather Gray was giving that. So, yes, pulled from the archives. Pulled from the archives. I have so much archival merch. And there was some, there was a pile of merch sitting in my studio, which, by the way, I have now, like, bins in my studio. Like, things are going into bins. And I'm going to set up all my old merch up here. But I had pulled some things of things that we almost made. Remember I showed you while you were here? Frightening. We have some samples in the studio over here of things we never made. Like some of the ugliest shit on the planet. Like, thank God. What were we thinking? No, the thing is we got the samples and we were like, no, it's not like we were ever on the fence. You know what I mean? It's not like those things were ever almost made once we saw what they would look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like we've been slaying the merch recently. So I feel good about where we're at. Slaying the merch and that word on the street is that there are still some baby pink sets left. I heard that too, actually, but I can't reveal my sources. I can neither confirm nor deny. You just have to go to shoptoastmerch.com to check out for yourself. To check out for yourself. Okay, so big week we have. Do we? Um, yeah. In what sense? A meeting with my running coach. Right. The Love is Blind reunion, which I just found out is not being filmed live. It was already recorded, but it's being aired live 9 p.m., on Netflix, which I kind of like. I love that, like a viewing experience for us. We can be a part of something that is technologically sound. Yes, hopefully they don't have, you know, issues. I think that's a great idea. Me too. Also, I did something crazy last night. Crack? 
crazier meth i watched the real housewives of beverly hills holy shit she's nuts so i finished catching up with summer house i'm caught up on vanderpump rules i'm just in like my tv turned on era and i was like Mm -hmm. okay what have i been wanting to watch so i got back into the season of beverly hills that's so crazy i literally stopped watching after like episode two and i haven't really heard much about it all i saw was a preview for next week's reunion where andy cohen says all right kyle another million dollar question what's going on between you and morgan wade you mean to tell me they haven't found out yet right no i don't think this season is particularly good but i was just looking for some content to watch i had an hour or so so i am curious i am curious like where um name them comes from Claudia? because i i love it i, I don't know the re- i'm it. obsessed Claudia, i just watched it name them last <laughs> night and it was an infuriating scene like sutton is being insane like you know i don't when, care you know you're like arguing with someone oh no i'm sure it's like a great tiktok sound moment. or whatever you yeah know when you're arguing with someone and they keep saying the same thing and it's like yes. first of all stop saying the same thing it's really annoying and two let me fucking speak yeah, yeah, yeah. But like for the culture, name them. Oh, it has that become a sound that's really funny. She oh, keeps yeah. saying name them, name them. And it's like, okay, first of all, stop saying that. And second of all, can you let me? Yeah, name them. It was really, and the, her facial expression as she said it, like Kyle keeps name saying em. Sutton was off and Sutton's like really offended by that, but Sutton was off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're kind of like insane for doing that. I know. So maybe I'll continue with that, except I think Summer House or VPR is on tonight. So probably back to reg- regular scheduled programming. Vanderpump Rules is on tonight. I um, We have made, you know, just wanted to update everyone. An idea that was sort of hatched on the toast live in, in Technicolor was Jackie and I were thinking about throwing a celebratory party for our six year anniversary of the toast inception which is coming up you know in a mere mere few weeks and we have made significant progress in the planning for the party and i'm actually not feeling like really excited about it i need to find a dress we're throwing a party i need to find a dress too we're also what one of my ideas was that it will come to fruition which will make it exciting for others is we're going to professionally vlog it and what i like to call a documentary we're making a documentary of the party I love that. Yeah, for the Patreon. Sorry, I should have made that. No, clear. yeah. No, HBO yeah, no, sorry. Max. This is a place of business. This is no, a place. No. Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, if HBO Max wants to purchase p- after Patreon gets the first exclusive, yeah. we're down. Like, we're going to vlog the whole party, but I think it's not going to be us and our phones. Like, I think we should have videographers. Therefore, it's a documentary. We are kind of like sparing no expense for this party. Should we have like haute couture gowns made at an atelier in Italy? So shoptoastmerch.com. Pretty much. You should have. Oh my God. We should have. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Made out of yeah. our merch. Like all the, by the way, even the samples like we didn't tapestry. make like. A tree. A quilt. It's beautiful. Yeah. No, like I'm literally going to wear like a custom off-white gown. You know how Haley Bieber's wedding veil said till death to us part. It's literally going to say like the toast. Yeah. We are sparing no expense. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So that's an exciting project both personal and professional speaking of projects professional and personal i heard a rumor that the redheads after you know the redheads are the type of gals who say they're going to do something and then they fucking do it because it appears as though you've hired a social media manager yes it appears as though we have found our match you know it was giving uh, america's next top social media manager and we've met a wonderful gal and i think it's going to be the start of a great relationship so you might see the content really popping off soon and don't be don't be alarmed it's and us. don't be tardy we, we have and don't hacked. be tardy we because it might hacked. it might never be too late but you know you don't want to be a loser no it's never been too late to join the redheads and you know that's something that i'm really passionate about but if there were to be a great time to join the redheads it would be like when we're about to kind of dominate social media and the conversation yeah. online and the conversation <laughs> online um can i say something like kind of crazy sure i do feel like it's too late like what do, what have you been doing like we've been literally saying for years to join the redheads like yeah it's never too late well, hypothetically. Claudia, okay imagine this imagine someone like had a lot going on at the time maybe they were like having multiple children didn't have time to read every month keep up fair 
What I will say though is what we can do as redheads to sort of facilitate anyone joining is something that we've been meaning to do for a while, which is a trailer episode for our podcast page where yeah. we introduce ourselves. Because we've got a lot of girls on the show. We got a lot of personalities and you might not know everyone who's on it could be intimidating a podcast with four hosts like if you don't know them you do definitely need to do that so we're we will do a trailer episode where we introduce ourselves we'll each talk about our favorite books what kind of books we like to read some facets of our personality our personal life and you know we'll do our usual classic redheads banter so mm -hmm. you can get to know the dynamic i actually started last night my book club's book for the month we actually postponed everybody was just like not available for the date that we had chosen and we usually have a rule you know, no rescheduling. If you can't come, you can't come. But literally, like, nobody was able to come. So rescheduled, which was good because I hadn't even started the book. What's the book? First Lie Wins. Oh, I've been seeing it. And I've been seeing Have good you? things. Yeah. It's a Reese's Choice. Don't I'm hold only it about against. 10%. Don't hold it against the book. I'm only about 10% in, but it reminds me a lot of that book that you made me read, The Social Climber by Amanda Pellegrino, yeah. remember? Um, it feels very similar. So oh, I don't so know if it's going like to be. It. I don't know if it's going to be. I'm okay. only 10% in. Cool. Our book for this month on the Redheads, which is also why it's a great month to join the Redheads, is By Baby by Carola Levering, which might mean nothing to you, but Carola Love, Levering in other words. wrote Tell Me Lies, which is that show That's on what Hulu. I meant. Yeah, so, I just got that book in PR. Oh, so if you want to join the Redheads, it's not too do late Do you need a you. copy? I kind of do need a copy for my bookshelf. Will you mail it to me? That way I don't have I to will. buy one. I actually got two. I'm on like two PR lists. We've become like really influential voices in literary. Like, and I'm not, I'm being dead serious about that. Like, People are dying to get their books in our hands. Yeah, for sure. Because if we love a book, we'll let them know. No, we like, Jackie will, won't take credit for it, but Jackie literally invented the book It Happened One Summer. Not when you read it. It was a joint effort, but it was your recommendation. And then when I read it, like you had recommended to me, we talked about, like you invented that book, Tessa Bailey, like she, she owes you a check. Well, I have to give credit where it's due. Margo almost chose it for the redhead. She was between two books and that was one of them. And I wound up reading it because she had put it on my radar. I don't know if she had read it yet. And in hindsight, she should have chosen it for the Redheads because that would have been a much more iconic episode than We Are the Brennans. No offense. Uh, the worst fucking book on the planet. You know what no I offense. just put together? She read it. Read it. Read it. Um, That's read what it. the app. You yeah, read it is like, oh, I read it on Reddit. I never put that together. It's kind of like a, an amazing name. <laughs> For an app where you read things. Right. No, it makes a lot of sense. Actually, Kindle should be called Reddit. Ugh, you know, I lost my Kindle. Classic turdy. It's like my third one. And you know that the Kindle Oasis is discontinued. What's new? That's the thing. There were rumors that they discontinued it because they're coming out with a bigger and better one. Nothing is new. I don't know what to do. I'm reading on this old paper white that I hate. I like the paper white. It's okay. I miss the buttons. The buttons are everything. I'm sure you could get an old Kindle on Amazon. You could buy like a refurbished one. I just feel like that's a way to spend money on something that's broken. No, it, mm, maybe. You know? Yeah. I'm actually like really not a fan. I love a deal. Like I'm always going to be like one for a deal. In tech, this whole refurbished thing where you can like buy an opened box of like a TV with an, that's already been opened from Best Buy. To me, that's just a way to spend like half the money on a broken TV. Like you're going to end up spending more. I just want to say one time I did do open box on a TV from Best Buy, literally, and it was so inexpensive and it was a perfectly fine TV and it was a win-win. Just that one time. Yeah, okay. I shouldn't have used the TV as an example because I actually think buying like a refurbished TV is fine. Like how broken can a TV be? It's, there's literally one button. But like computers, phones, Kindles, like I don't believe in it. Oh, I feel like Kindle is one of those things where it's okay you because think? it's so low tech. Yeah, I think you're okay. Or how about like, is anybody in listening to this podcast selling like a rarely used Kindle Oasis? I'll buy it from you. How about that? Give it to a, you know, a woman. Don't you have the hookup at Amazon? You, they don't have some Oasis uh, in the back room? The last time I was at Amazon Live, I was like kind of putting it out there. Like, oh no, I lost my Kindle. Oh no, they're being discontinued. <laughs> Waiting for one to just sort of materialize in front of me and it didn't happen. Maybe you weren't being overt enough. I think we both know I was. Okay, well, okay, we'll leave it there. Let's see, maybe one will materialize now that you've made your Perhaps. intentions clear. I feel like something so crazy is happening right now. You're sitting cross-legged? Well, I guess that is kind of nuts of me, but no. Um, we're both drinking coffee, and I feel like for years, well, like one year, because I just started drinking coffee, you really kind of like make fun of like how my coffees are basically milkshakes. Okay. Look at your coffee. It's the color if of my outfit. 
It's literally milkshake. Yours is Look really at mine. Dark. Yeah, because I'm literally like moving to the Congo and you know drinking coffee wherever they make straight coffee. from I don't the know. vine. Yeah, like I'm obsessed. Like I'm such a coffee head. So what's in your coffee? Same as always, the Starbucks jugs. I like. Okay. I'm like I'm a coffee head and I'm drinking Starbucks. Um, jug. Starbucks jug. You know the cold brew medium roast. It's not cold brew. Sorry, it's just iced coffee in a jug from the grocery store. Medium roast. Coffee made sugar free hazelnut. Little splash. One splendor. It must be the coffee mate that doesn't provide a lot of color. Well, I just don't put a lot anymore. I used to, I've been slowly pulling back. I'm, I'm sort of kind of getting used to the taste of coffee. That's nice. Where is coffee made? Is it Africa? At, all over. Yeah, there's... Oh, is it? Yeah, Rebecca was just posting pictures from her honeymoon. She was having fresh coffee in Uganda, I think. Yeah, yeah. But also, okay, like, no, there's you're right. coffee in Colombia. Colombia, that's what I was thinking, not the Congo. Oh, my God, how dumb am I? I'm sure there's coffee in the Congo somewhere. That's the thing. There's coffee everywhere. That's the thing. It just depends what kind of coffee you like and where you like to get your coffee from. Right. And remember that episode of the Kardashians where Chloe became obsessed, like addicted to that? Um, what is, was it Colombian? What was it? Colombian coffee. And she like drove around all these neighborhoods looking and she rolls down her window and she's like, do you know where the Colombian coffee shop is? And the lady's like, I'm deaf. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> Classic. That, that, those were the days. That'll be you soon. Literally. So now so that we've we've, got a great, oh. we've got our coffees. We've got our coffees. We're all we've caught got up. each other. We've got each other. Oh, something that you've been texting me about that I wanted to just like talk to you about in person, but we might as well just iron it out right now, is tomorrow. Yeah, no, don't bring it up because I have something to tell you later. Okay, sorry about that. So I guess now, without further yeah. ado, it is time for the Fast Five Stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Etsy. So we're here to tell you that there's no reason to panic the next time you're searching for the perfect gift because now you can use gift mode on Etsy. Gift mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. Now it's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life like the pickleballer, the jazz fan, the zen seeker, the artist, or the pasta lover. For me, the golfer. I didn't realize there's so many like things you can customize in your golf game and Etsy's such a great place. Ben was talking about, ugh, what are those things called? Jackie, do you know what I'm talking about? Like when you need to move your ball, so you put like this little disc underneath it in golf. It's not a T, it's like the little circular ones. Whatever, you can customize them with like a photo. And Ben was like, where do I do it? I'm like, try Etsy. So next time, if you're looking for like the man in your life who loves to golf, you want to get him like custom tees or custom balls, Etsy has a million great sellers who'll do that for you. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there is something for everyone on Etsy. And there's really just like a lot of pressure around gift giving. Um, and if you have a hard time thinking of ideas for a husband, a family member, you know, a sister slash co-host, sometimes you can get super stressed trying to find the perfect thing. But now with gift mode on Etsy, you can search hundreds of gifting personas and find so many incredible items. And we actually just found a great gift for... Um, I found a great gift for Ben on Etsy. And Ben is also like just new to Etsy. And he was talking actually about Etsy the other night. And he's like, it's so amazing. I'm like, girl, like we know. Like Ben is always, Ben is truly too late to everything. So It's never too late to get on Etsy. If you need to find the perfect gift, don't panic. Try gift mode now. Today's episode is also brought to you by Caraway. Spring is here. So if you're resetting for the spring, do so with Caraway's non-toxic cookware, the perfect way to kick off spring cleaning. With so many collections to explore, there's sure to be a Caraway for every kind of cook. Okay, by the way, I'm bringing like a whole new energy to the Caraway ads. Cause you know, it was a slow rollout for me. My kitchen has recently gotten bigger, so I was able to acquire more Caraway tings. So now I have the, do you have the kitchen block? Yes. And the wooden utensils? Yes, just got that. Um, I'm an elite sick. chef. What Me too. I also just got that I need to bring this energy to the Caraway ads is their steamer baskets. They have two, large and small, and I've been making my own baby food and steaming the food mm. in my Caraway. I was using my Caraway pots, but I was using a crap steaming basket. Finally got the Caraway one. I know now that now my entire process is non-toxic. That feels good for mama. We also got the cutting boards, and Ben was like hesitant because he loves his cutting boards. I said, first of all, these are disgusting, the ones we've had. They can be really toxically made and also like, they're disgusting, so let's move on. No. And he's really been open to it. Caraway shamed my cutting boards. I didn't even mm -hmm. realize what I was doing. And they were like, we see your cutting boards and we're just going to send you some of ours because yours are unacceptable. And they were right. They, I can't believe I didn't notice. 
Visit CarawayHome.com slash Toasty to take advantage of this limited time offer of 10% off your next purchase. The deal is exclusive for toasters, so visit CarawayHome.com slash Toasty or use code Toasty at checkout. Caraway, it's non-toxic cookware made modern. Today's episode is also brought to you by Babbel, the best way to learn a language, immersion, living where the language is spoken and using it every day. But that might not be in the cards for you this year, and you can still learn a language the second best way. That's with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024. The science-backed language app Babbel is actually working. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Use Babbel. They have quick 10-minute lessons that are handcrafted by over 2,000 language experts to start you speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. They're designed by real people real people for real conversations. Their tips and tools are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching so you're ready to practice what you've learned in the real world. So if you're planning a trip this summer, now's a great time to just spend some time on Babbel, whether you're going to Italy or Spain, brushing up on the language. One, it's a more fun way to travel when you have like a decent grasp on the language. And two, it's just a little bit safer. You know how to ask for directions. You won't get lost. Studies from Yale, Michigan University, and others continue to prove that Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for, Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. So here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for Toast listeners at babbel.com slash toast. That's 55% at babbel.com slash toast, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash toast. Rules and restrictions may apply. Head to babbel.com slash T-O-A-S-T. Thank you, Claudia. An absolute pleasure and an honor. Our first story, Al Pacino is addressing his offensive and hurtful Oscars best picture blunder, though it wasn't offensive and hurtful, but it was confusing. By the way, it was just a weird moment, but apologies were not... Well, apologies seem to be in order for him because um, he has broken his silence over the furor over his presentation of the coveted Best Picture Award because it was a little anticlimactic. Did you watch it? Yes. Who does Al Pacino look like to you? Al Pacino? Yeah, but like, come on. Nothing. Ben's dad. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, he does. When he was walking out, I'm like, Ben, does anybody tell your dad he looks like Al Pacino? And Ben was like, yes, actually. Oh, that is funny. It was giving Bruce. Well, he was there to present the top honor and his delivery was just not the greatest. He flopped. He buried the lead. Um, (laughs) He announced that he would be announcing best picture. And then he just opened the envelope and said, I see Oppenheimer. My, so I'm his, sorry, my eyes see Oppenheimer. In his defense, it's a little strange because there isn't, I don't think, a package like there is for every other award, like the nominees are, then they go to this video because throughout the night, they right. give trailers of every film. So by the time the last award, you don't need to do the package. So it was, you know, in his defense, now he should have said, and the Oscar goes too, and then over, made a meal of it so people know that it's being announced in this moment. He just kind of was like, I'm here to do this. And opened the envelope. He's like, I'm here to do this. I guess I'll open the envelope now. My eyes see Oppenheimer. Yeah, it was weird. But, you know, historically, things have gone worse for the best picture. So I feel like as long as you're not reading the wrong curd, you had good? Yeah, plus the Oscar producers didn't start playing the music immediately. And I feel that helped. That added to the general confusion. And then once they started playing and they panned to the audience members, but like he kind of flubbed it, but also if the producers knew that there isn't going to be a package and this is the real envelope, it's not like a gag that he's going to open an envelope and do something, then they should have went on with the show, not left him there like bumbling in silence. I just want to say like, leave the man alone. Like he has to issue an apology. What is he, a hundred years old? Leave him alone. He's 83. And this was what he said. He said, there seems to be, and it's not really an apology. It's kind of like an explanation and a little bit of a go fuck yourself. There seems to be some controversy about my not mentioning every film by name last night before announcing the best picture award. I just want to be clear. It was not my intention to omit them. Rather a choice by the producers not to have them set again, since they were highlighted individually throughout the ceremony. I was honored to be part of the evening and chose to follow the way they wished for this award to be presented. I realized being nominated as a huge milestone in one's life and not to be fully recognized as offensive and hurtful. Um, By the way, Al Pacino did absolutely nothing wrong. The only thing he could have done better, I don't know why he said, my eyes see Oppenheimer. Just say Oppenheimer. Like you literally had one job. And and say like, and the winner is Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or best 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 picture picture. goes to. Yeah, just a little introductory. He buried the lead a little bit. 
I know yesterday, my phone is listening to me because yesterday on the toast I was talking about how, you know, Christopher Nolan's like a DILF. And I've ended up on like Nolan talk. <sighs> Just a great place to be. I saw this morning that all in all, Christopher Nolan made $100 million on Oppenheimer. Really? Mm hmm Now for a director, is that a lot or a little? I'm assuming it's a lot. I think it's a lot. Oh, I feel like those are, you know, James Cameron type of type of numbers. Yeah, well, I think it pulled in James Cameron type of numbers. Who do you think is the greatest director of our time? Kenny Ortega. You're such a star. Like, <laughs> that was the perfect answer. Seriously, like, end the podcast. We can all go home. Thank you. Clip it. Write it down. <laughs> like, my God, I never could have come up with an answer that funny in my life. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Thank you. Who were you going to say? And you're right. And I'm right. Right. He is. No, I was just wondering because I feel like every year there's like a director who's having a moment and they're like, oh, he's the greatest director of our time. It's either James Cameron. Who is? Like, well, it's, it, Christopher Nolan's up there. James Cameron's up there. Quentin Tarantino's up there. Yes. Guillermo del Toro. Yes. I feel like of all the people we've just named, I'd still say probably James Cameron. Yeah. Greatest directors of all time. Now, this includes like people who are dead. Oh, Scorsese, Spielberg. Sco okay, Scorsese, maybe. For me, yeah, I okay. think, for what I like, I've re really only seen one James Cameron movie, so I would say Scorsese more. Woody Allen, Spike Lee. Oh, you had said Spielberg. D Darren Aronofsky, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. But he's also an actor, more so, no? Both. He's really a director these days, though. These days. These days. These days. Who else? Francis Ford Coppola, but he's dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, then Sofia Coppola. Oh, damn. Not one woman on this list. Lol. Greta uh, Gerwig. Greta's not actually not on this list. The only woman is Catherine Bigelow. Yeah, and she did Zero Dark Thirty. And I think she was married to or is married to James Cameron. Oh, my God. We stand. I think oh, they're divorced and they like feud about their movies. Love. I need a movie about that. Where's Nancy Myers on this list? True. True. Yeah, she was married to him. She does like war movies, Hurt Locker. Oh, wow. By the way, I'm so sorry. Francis Ford Coppola is not dead. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Sophia Coppola is not on this list, but I don't think she's there yet. No, but she's like a director that's buzzy with a point of view. And with a legacy. Like she's a Nepo director. Yeah. I think she holds her own. What was I just watching about Francis Ford Coppola? Because I just saw a picture. Oh, um, Miles Teller, help me. Miles Teller, Francis Ford Coppola, help me. Come on. I have, what? Help, what's the name? Come on, you know everything. Uh, he's in a movie? Show, Paramount Plus. Oh, the one, uh, come on. About the Godfather. Come on. What's it called? The Offer. The Offer. <laughs> I'm mean, sorry, I was just choking. Um, yeah, it's like a show about the making of the movie God, The Godfather and the person who plays Francis Ford Coppola. I guess I've never seen a picture of Francis Ford Coppola until I just did that Google. Twins. With Miles Teller. No, Miles Teller played someone else. Oh. He played the producer. The person who played Francis Ford Coppola. Is twins. Twins. With Francis. With Francis. FFC. Right. Having like a three name name is pretty sick. Like Vanessa Ann Hudgens. Exactly. Don't forget the Ann. Yeah. Who else? Because I feel like you can either be like a Madonna, a Cher, or a Francis Ford Coppola. You know, there's really no in between. Well, then you're just a firsty lasty. Uh, Mary J. Blige, you know? Yeah. Don't forget the J. I, I literally would never. If you said Mary Blige, I'd say, who the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> totally, totally. Hold on. You know, this iPad doesn't have diction, and I love to dictate. Would you like to dictate on the show? Yeah, like if I could just right now be like celebrities with three names. No, but I'm still typing. Right, like right. Chad Michael Murray, Sarah Michelle Gellar. If you said Evan Rachel Chad Wood. Murray. Right. Jackie, who's this? James Jones. James Earl Jones. Right. Like Only you need to think about I'm, it. I'm putting in the work. Okay, who's Jonathan Myers? Reese Myers. Damn, okay, good job. But just because we're having this conversation, I'm working to guess. But if you said Jonathan Myers randomly, I'd say Mike's brother. Do you know Catherine Jones? Zeta. Good one. Olivia John. Newton. Rip. Daniel Lewis. Day. 
she's crushing it. Claudia, what about Robert Jr.? Ugh, by the way, I kind of like love Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, we should watch Iron Man. We should, by the way, because Gwyneth is in it too. And I think it's a good one. Yeah, no, Ben loves it. And I just found out Robert Downey it's is one of Jewish. The good ones. I wish that like oh Anya Taylor Joy that's really part of her success I believe it not Anya Joy I don't know her no she's also an incredible actress with a unique look I mean but it's the Taylor holding her up she's an incredible actress with a unique look but it's the Taylor holding her up (laughs) title um also a perfect example of someone who's literally so talented but the three names really shot them to stardom Mm. Wendy McClendon Covey yeah you know yeah super talented Super. Super. Are you ready for our next story? A little more Oscars adjacent news because Mm -hmm. recaps of the parties are coming out and allegedly Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey rushed back from Singapore to attend Madonna's ultra exclusive Oscars after party. I doubt that they rushed. Known as the party, it was held at talent manager Guy O'Siri's home in Hollywood Hills on Sunday. The... Party was sponsored by Gucci. It had a strict no cameras policy, which is why we haven't seen any pictures. Not even from the outside? Like, come on, give us something. It looked fabulous. Yeah, and apparently Taylor and Travis were there. So was this like in direct competition with Vanity Fair or people went after Vanity Fair? I think it's like after, after. God, aren't these people tired? They wake up at literally at six in the morning to start glam. Yeah, but I'm sure they're on drugs. Oh my God, she's on fire today. <laughs> I'm sure, no, Claudia, I'm sure they just had a really big coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a five-hour energy straight from Colombia. They get their coffee. coffee. Totally. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the party looked jumping. Well, it didn't look anything because we didn't see it. It sounds jumping, especially because that they would rush back for it. But I do find it a little surprising that like Madonna has the biggest party. Have you been seeing these clips from Madonna's concerts? Of her literally screaming at a person for not standing up and then the person happened to be uh, in a wheelchair. That's one of my least favorite tropes. Me too. You know, it's like, it doesn't feel good when you see what's happening. Not for anyone. It's horrible for obviously the person in the wheelchair. It's it's horrible horrible for for the person on stage. It's also just annoying in general that one person can't be sitting at your concert. They don't even have to be in a wheelchair to have their reasons for not standing. They're there paying money. They're supporting you. They love you, okay? Like, can they sit? Is that not enough? I completely agree. And then it also begs the question, like, what is going on at Madonna's concert that she has time to, like, have all the lights on and look around to see who's not standing? Well, I also saw other footage from Madonna's concert and, like... Here's the thing. And before you say anything, I want to say, whatever you're about to say, I echo wholeheartedly. It was just... It's giving elder abuse. Like, who's making this woman do this? Did she almost die recently? Yeah. She had a really serious health scare. Yeah, she was like, yeah, like dead. And is it her that wants to keep singing and dancing? Because I'm watching these videos and it doesn't look like she's dying to be there. No, I really, I think it is. I think it's her. I think she also takes her role as, you know, elder gay icon, like extremely seriously. Yeah, okay. So she's happy with this? Yeah, no, I think, I. and by the way, when we announced, like, she announced a tour, we spoke about it. I was like, what is she doing? Like, just retire. I don't think that there's, like, this machine, you know, weekend at Bernieing Madonna. Like, I think Madonna's out there because Madonna wants to be. That's the vibe that okay. I get. Okay. I and really feel that way. I hope that's the case. And, and in that case, you know, live your truth is all I can live say. Your, the thing is, live your truth. And I've kind of made peace with the Madonna thing because I, and I feel like every time we talk about it, some of our older listeners like really hate, hate me. I am not like a huge Madonna fan. I think um, some of her music, you know, is catchy. I like the beat, but it's not for me. You know, and I know that it's really for like older women and the gays and, and I like, they, they just are tough fun, you know? Yeah. And Madonna's like not letting them down. So as even long though as I everyone's did hear, having fun, then sure. Yeah, I do. By the way, I do think everyone's having fun. Like, seriously. Great. I love that. I take it back. Keep doing whatever you're doing. Now, the calling out of the uh, disabled. Now, that was tough. That was tough for everyone involved. And then, like, her sort of... I kind of appreciate that she didn't just, like, bounce back afterwards. She really sat in the moment and was like, that's, you know, my bad. Like, it was really... I kind of like... I liked her bounce back. There's no good way to come back from that. No, and I feel like sometimes 
they don't even understand in the moment that the person's in the wheelchair so they just like keep going hard and then they learn after the person's in the wheelchair so i'm glad that you know it was all sort of sorted out in the in mere, mere moments yeah um, and i agree i think she owned it she said oh that's not pc yeah no like she just kind of like said what we were all thinking yikes yeah my bad yeah that one's on me yeah and and i guess that happens but i i do think in general like people can sit at a concert for their own reasons not every person who's sitting like needs to be picked on it's also i agree insane. and that was kind of you know what i really liked about seeing adele was that it's probably one of the only concerts where it's like mostly sitting and you can stand but it's not required it's just a different experience yeah i like to sit yeah one time i saw michael buble at the Barclay Center. That's like, so off brand for you. No, it was so weird. It was before I saw that video of him and his wife on Instagram Live. You know certain things stick with me. I'll never see Michael Bublé live again. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should Google it because I actually, like I actually once once a week will think about his wife and just worry for her and seriously pray for her. I feel like he's really scary. Um, but prior to that incident, I saw Michael Bublé, Ben and I, date night. Oh, by the way, I feel like I've told this story on the toast. You know one of my favorite things about Taylor Strecker is, you know, she always talks about her first marriage. Do you know what her wedding song? <laughs> I'm assuming it was Michael Bublé. Yeah, do you know which one? And she was like, it was so weird. Like, I don't know why. It was really emblematic of the fact that our marriage was destined to fail. What was it? Haven't met you yet. The whole song no, is about literally. it. Haven't met it's foreshadowing. <laughs> it's foreshadowing. And when that song comes on, she like always talks about it. It's so funny. Um, why was I talking about Michael Bublé? Oh, because I was like, you know what, Ben? I'd love to go to a Michael Bublé concert. I bet it's like a low-key sitting concert. The Michael Bublé stands. I'm they sure were on you, their feet. I'm sure you're unfamiliar with them, but he has like a cult following older women pussy popping on the dance floor. Like I didn't get one moment's rest at that concert. Love that for them. Yeah, it was giving very much like cruise ship energy. He should go on a cruise ship tour. Like I think that's his target demo. Dead serious. Love it. Mm -hmm. Everyone living their truth. And I need to go on a cruise. I need to go on a cruise. Like I talk about it so much. Yeah. I just don't love the fact that like I can't end the trip early like if I'm not feeling it. You know, I love having flexibility. There's I'm a also lot. on a spending freeze, so. There's a lot with the cruise that I have I a hard time wrapping my head around. You specifically. I, I would I would not say that a cruise is something you should do. No. Even though I love large, iconic ships. You do. From the safety of land, though. Land. Land yeah. ho. Land ho. What was the story? <laughs> I am a land ho. Big time. I'm a sea ho. The story was Taylor and Travis at this oh. glitzy Oscars party. Like, I care deeply. It's really hard for me to sort of speak on it without having seen one singular photo. Okay. And so I just want to say, I literally don't believe for a second that they rushed back. Taylor and Travis don't need to rush to anything. Like It's true. And she's on a two-month break. So they're just like, they returned from Singapore and went right. to the party. When he's off and she's currently off where do you think they reside i would say they're gonna do like a stint in la a stint in kansas city kansas city a lot of people think that um maybe some you know, new work around, around this time last year travis after the super bowl hosted snl and with dead poet society coming out they think that maybe we would get like a taylor hosted and a tra- travis hosted taylor performing snl we should we should like if people know what's good but nobody knows what's good so we probably won't right like people on the internet have better ideas for the culture than like the people in charge of the culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. But sometimes. Every now and then. The two meet or just one is influenced by the other. And that's good too. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Matthew Perry's will names the executors of his estate in a $1 million trust with the legendary Hollywood link. So the press has dug up Matthew Perry's will. Which it's like so invasive. Is public. Yeah, anyway. no, for sure. But according to a legal filing obtained by People, the will indicates that the majority of the late actor's belongings, belongings will be placed in a trust with a legendary Hollywood link. The document notes that he wanted to leave his items in the Alvy Singer Living Trust, which is seemingly named after Woody Allen's character in Annie Hall. His father and mother are named trust beneficiaries and his half-sister is also a beneficiary. He indicated in his will that any children he had would also be entitled to access his estate. He never had kids. It also indicates that he had over $1 million in personal property when he died, which is in addition to what his executors had already put in the living trust. 
Sounds like not a lot of money. Yeah, also one of his executors is Mike Myers' ex-wife. Hmm. Who? Robin Ruzan. There were so many people in his book, girls specifically who he dated, some who were famous and some who were more like industry people. And I, none of the names were the real people's names. And I really was waiting for someone to like put together a TikTok of like who each girl was because I feel like, I know, I couldn't even figure out which one was Lizzie Kaplan. You know, he dated Janice Ian for like many, many years. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know which one that was. I feel like it was the one who we went to go see in the play in London. I don't know. Um, but one of the sad parts of the book was him talking about um, how he never had kids. And it was something he wanted, but like his addiction really got in the way. Oh, that is sad. And I know he he spent money really irresponsibly. He also said, you know, he doesn't even know how much money he spent on drugs, but he knows he spent about seven and a half million dollars on his recovery in terms of like medications, nurses, Rehab. facilities, rehabs. Um, but he's one of the highest paid actors on television. So I think they make like $25 million a year just from Friends Residuals on like syndicated networks and stuff. So a million dollar trust, like thanks. I think that's just one of the, a million dollars in personal property, but he already had living trust and trust maybe aren't available to the public. Yeah, and he also said like he wasn't the most responsible with his money. Like he was always just like buying new cars and new houses every time he got sober because it was like ne like a need to feel something. And he was very afraid of being like alone and the house would freak him out. So he probably, you know, wasn't out of all the friends the most, you know, in the best financial standing, but it was a lot of money. Right, but also like without children, you know, he spent his money and lived his life and enjoyed his life. Yeah. If, even if there's this big pot right now. Yeah. Right, for his parents and his half-siblings. Yeah. He never mentioned at any point in the book money being an issue when it came to, like, drugs and stuff. It wasn't like a lot of... I forget what other book I read. Oh, Mike, The Situation. You go he was broke. Make, spending all He went money. broke. Yeah. He went broke. And that's how he ended up accidentally doing heroin because he literally couldn't afford anything else. Damn. That, that book was so crazy. I can't recommend it enough. Damn. I think I'll, yeah. I'll start reading some more. Memoirs? No, just like I feel like I only read right now when it's redheads just because I don't have a ton of free time. But just like I was able to watch Beverly Hills last night, I could have spent more time reading. So I think it's time to start reading more for leisure. Okay, wait. Also, I had the craziest thought I wanted to run by you. I think in like a few months, it's going to be my turn to pick for the book club. And I had a crazy thought. If we sync up? No. Oh. I mean, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea, but that's not what and I And then like all say. the redheads could go to the Balabustas? Oh my God, wait. They would love that. Okay, wait. But what I was going to say was I was thinking of choosing Demon Copperhead. Yes. Do you think I would like it? It's an endeavor. It's like work and it's hard. It's long. But it's so good. And it was my best book of 2023. <sighs> and those are the books worth reading. Like you will finish it and you'll be exactly. like, that was a good use of my time. Exactly. And that's what the book club is for. Like real sort of ambitious choices, things I never would read. And I brought it up to some of the gals because I had dinner with them over the weekend and they, you know, they weren't thrilled about it. But that's the point. Yeah. I remember in the beginning of the book, like it, I just felt like I never got into the book until I just was, had, I started just reading huge chunks just to like make headway. Yeah. And then I was in it. Yeah. So if I don't do it for book club, like it's, that's a goal of mine this year to read Demon Copperhead. How about oh, that? How many pages is it? I don't even think it's that crazy. It's just so dense, you know? Yeah. That's for, like for me, I'm really not like that smart. Like I can't read like really intellectually dense, like big worded books. Not I to sound like so stupid. Neither can I. Anytime I like punch above my weight, I'm like, yes, oh, yes. I'm a dumb bitch. Above your reading level. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This book is, but I was able to understand this book. Oh, 560. Okay. Not bad. Okay, okay. I thought it was like a thousand. No, no, no. 560. I also feel like that's the type of book I'd like to buy um, hardcover so like people in the airport know like I'm a smart girl. For sure, but then you will never read it. Oh, because like it's so, it's visual, like no, visualizing how many like, pages you it, have left. I, as a Kindle reader, it's harder to get into a physical book for me. Just is. I agree. And why would you buy the book that's going to be the heaviest book of all the books you read? Just so people in the airport know, like, I went to college, you know, like, I'm smart. Well, you could also put your book cover on your Kindle. Not the same. Not enough people could see it from far away. Or get a t-shirt that said, I'm reading Demon Copperhead. What have you done today? Maybe I'll just get a tattoo on my forehead. Currently reading, colon, Demon Copperhead. I think that's smart. 
Are you ready for yeah. our next story? It's our fourth story. No. I didn't think so. No. The fourth story is brought to you by Hatch. Oh, spring forward, you guys. It's that time of year where our clocks are unwound. Your sleep schedule, your daily routine might be a little, you know, reached a hiccup recently. We're all excited to have an extra hour of light in the evening again, but we dread now waking up on that first morning after spring forward. The whole week is kind of rough. So this year, it's easier because we have Hatch. Hatch can help you choose sleep, prioritize healthy habits, and make the time change transition seamless and enjoyable. The Hatch Restore helps you build sleep habits that make you unwind and your wake routines so much simpler and enjoyable for a phone-free bedtime no matter what time of year it is. Just add it to the list of things Jackie told me to get and I took forever to get. I was like, it wakes you up with light? God, I used to be so dumb. I'm not anymore because I have the Hatch Restore. Thanks, Jax. Honestly, I... I'm a big fan of low lift wellness tings. Like I'm not going to, you know, drink matcha. That's just too much for me. But things in the morning to help me feel my best and, you know, wake up restful. Hatch has been the absolute game changer. It's the best thing Jackie ever introduced to me. I love the sleep sounds. I really love being woken up by light. It is so civilized. I feel like that's how the cavemen used to do it, you know? It's so natural. It's so natural. I cannot recommend the Hatch enough. It's the best way to wake up. It's the best way to go to bed. With Hatch Plus, the subscription, you can access the latest routine building features like Cue and Unwind, which signals to you that it's time for bed and pillow talk. So right now, Hatch is offering our listeners $20 off their purchase of the Hatch Restore and free shipping at hatch.co slash toast. Have you heard That's the ha- new Hatch sleep sound? That's hatch.co slash toast to get $20 off and free shipping. Hatch.co slash toast. No, I haven't. Green noise. It's the best one. Oh, I'm on pink. I'm on my pink noise grind. Pink noise, brown noise, white noise. They just launched green. My favorite. Today's episode is also brought to you by Fast Growing Trees. Did you know that Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers in the U.S.? You can grow lemon, avocado, olive, or fig trees inside your home on top of the wide variety of house plants available. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online and your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. And along with their 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, they offer free plant consultation forever. Jax, I know you're outdoor you're kind of like a green thumb your your new life allows you for things like this I I love a house plant an indoor tree but you really have taken it to the next level I do I have an orange tree from fastgrowingtrees.com they make it so easy because you just plug in your zip code and they'll let you know what zone you are your fast growing trees zone and then you could see things that thrive in your zone so you're not buy, I'm not buying like a pine tree for Florida right right I love that. Mm -hmm. Right now, they have some of the best deals online, like up to half off on select plants. And listeners of our show are going to get an additional 15% off their first purchase when they use code TOAST at checkout. So that's an additional 15% off only at fastgrowingtrees.com and using the code T-O-A-S-T at checkout. That link is fastgrowingtrees.com. The code is TOAST. The offer is valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions do apply. You can also talk to a plant expert about your soil type, your landscape design, how to take care of your plants, and everything else you might need. So if you're not into plants, you don't have a green thumb, it's totally okay. They have got you covered. Thank you, Claudia. Our next story, new celebrity skincare line. Dwayne Johnson debuts a men's grooming line called Papa Tui. So wrestler, actor, director, father, and now skincare connoisseur, Dwayne Johnson has debuted his men's personal care brand featuring skin, hair, body, and tattoo care products made with cleaner ingredients and focused on performance. Even more exciting, every product is under $10. It is launching in Target stores and on Target.com on March 10th. His impetus behind launching the brand is such he said quote i found over the years as men we can have these great conversations about working out recovery ice bath sauna and we can talk about trucks and cheat meals and tequila and our favorite movies but every crush Every conversation I would have regarding skincare, I was always pulled to the side privately. Like, hey, can I ask you a question? What do you do for your skin? So in an effort to normalize men taking care of their skin, he used his business savvy and charm to create a line that falls into the mustache bucket. Okay, that explanation, like I was about to like come on here and praise and the explanation was like kind of stupid. Oh, wait, that Um, was going to be the opposite. You were going to come on here and clown and the explanation was like, oh, okay. No, I happen to think Dwayne Johnson is in a position where any brand he launches, his tequila is 
so successful. Any brand he launches, he's kind of just got that mag magic touch. People really love him. I think Papa Tui is such a great name. It being an exclusive collab with Target, I feel like this is pretty fail proof. Like I think it's, I think it's awesome. Under ten dollars, I love. But then that explanation, it's like, oh, we're ashamed to take care of our skin. Like, okay, yeah, normalize men's skincare. Like, shut up, you know. Yeah, and I, I just, I don't think that men need to be as enthusiastic about skincare I as agree. women. I think that they should have a something that they like, use good ingredients, but then continue on with their manly things. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> this is for the girls. Like, stop. Yeah, it's kind of... Can we of, have one thing? Like, Can we have one like thing? It's just like taking our stuff. It's so true. Like, we can't have anything. Yeah. But, but, but... Dwayne Johnson is just someone I, I actually really like. And nothing he does really bothers me. Yeah, I agree. I also like the idea of tattoo care. Never thought about that. I thought that. the same thing. And he's, you know, literally tattoo man. Yes, of course. And it would make sense that your tattoos could use a bit of care. Yes, also, I've, I've heard of this. Like, your skin can stretch over time. The ink can dull. So, yes, I agree. So, all in all, not a bad celeb skincare idea. No, when I first heard the idea, like, the I was like, what? But the more I thought about it, it's really, it's not a horrible idea. And he's going about it in a good way. Like, in a really accessible way with it's Target. It's not like A-Rod men's makeup. Hims, right? What was that company called? I don't know. But it was, like, makeup, yeah? Yes, when A-Rod launched makeup, find me the name of the company. Because I do believe it's it's the company now, Hims. Let me see. Right. A-Rod's new beauty line says about the rise of men's makeup. Yeah, that picture of him like putting on concealer. Like, <laughs> what was the company called? Hims. Hims. So, <laughs> but Jackie, is that now the company Hims? Let me. Yeah, I think so. Him. Oh, he teamed up with Hims because Hims. That I was think the first a, time I ever like heard about the company shareholder. So the first time I ever heard about the company Hims was when A Rod was launching concealer, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but now Hims is an extremely successful company for men and women. They have hers and hymns and that you can get weight loss shots on there you can get uh hair growth you supplements can get you can sex pills it's kind of like a big telehealth weight, company tackle anxiety great and and you know a man's concealer like you got a pimple and you want to conceal it i'm fine with that i think a rod being the face of it is funny no but by the way like literally women have perfected like the, go to sephora like literally you could find every what's different about a man's no but it's just about the branding it's the same no, way it's so dumb we have our own razors it there's billion dollar businesses just yeah. built off of the fact that it's the same product marketed to different people. But it wasn't a success. A-Rod's participation. But you're saying Hims is. Hims is. I'm saying the concealer wasn't. Oh, the blur stick? The blur stick, yeah. They couldn't even call it a concealer. It's giving fragile. <laughs> yeah. Like whenever Ben has a crazy ass pimple, I'm like, get over here. Like I will put NARS on it. Yeah, the best of the best. The best of the best. Like seriously, why bother? You know, we've been at this for 50 years, more. Because someone wants to make a, a, a dollar, Turdy. And I mean, they I see a gap that. in the market. I understand that. So they gave it a shot. Yeah. Our fifth and final story, a little human interest news. Love. Because a new report has come out from Job Seeker of the most of the most popular jobs in the world. What certain country, what most people is their dream job in that country. Start again. You just spoke not English. Okay. Job Seeker put out a report of the worldwide most searched for dream jobs. Okay. So by country? country, what most people were searching for. It doesn't mean what everyone wants to be because it's mostly like how to become a blank. Got it. Okay. Um, For the United States, the most searched one was flight attendant. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Same for Canada. Chelsea's influence. Worldwide, the most popular one was pilot. A lot of people want to become a pilot. Learn how. I find that interesting. Yeah, there wasn't as much like influencer as that's you would what think. I was. I thought that's what it was going to be. Um, there is journalist, author. What's your dream job? I'm living it, podcasting with my sis. Okay, but like for real, like outside of this, it's hard to say. Like dream, dream. So dream, dream, dream. Something I would actually want to do or something I think I would be good at. You actually would want to do if given the opportunity. And I would quit this for it. 
Oh God. Okay. In it's this hard. hypothetical universe, the toast doesn't exist. And I have to just go out and get a job. I don't know. Like, are you saying practically or dreamy? You know, dreamy, it's naming nail polishes for OPI. Great. Thank you. That was the answer I wanted. Practically, maybe a teacher. You know, I, I would think I would excel. No, not practically. Dream. Dream lottery winner. Not a job. Okay. <laughs> oh, naming oh, nail colors for OPI. What would you name the color of like your sweater? My sweater? Espresso problems. It would be my oh. line. Oh, no, no, no. Universal. Come on. Um, Espresso is, would be better. But that's yeah. cute, too. Uh, By the way, you could have done, you could have done more universal, like Espresso Kennedy. Oh, na- Espresso Onassis. <laughs> that's cute. This would be a nice color. It would. It's kind of what I'm wearing on my nails. Or, you know, they would do like, send me nudes. Yeah, like this new vulgar culture would yeah. do that. Yeah, I guess that is vulgar. I wouldn't want my my names to be vulgar. Yours would be family friendly. It would be family friendly. Birthday Cafe, suit. Cafe au lait. Yeah. I What's your obviously dream job? pop star. True. Like would do anything to be like a popular pop star, by the way, not just like a struggling one. But popular is not I would guaranteed. Want, I would want why it's a dream we're just making stuff up like i would want to be like a pop star with millions of adoring fans okay you're working your way there yeah yeah like you could keep doing this keep doing your comedy and then like if your next comedy tour is like psych i'm singing for two hours and you guys are gonna dance along i would love like i don't know something about just like being in a gorgeous look with a microphone and just nothing but me and the music a dream. I think you should do it. You should hoodwink fans into coming to see you for one thing and just start singing. It would be called the hoodwinked tour. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Me too. So those were the fast five. Um, that was our show. Anything else you want to chit chat about before we let the peeps go? I mean, I do, you know, I have to make haste at some point. I have plenty of time, but I do have my running coach today. I need time to mentally prepare. Also, what should I eat before? Carbo load, right? But not too really? close in advance. Like you should have... Carbs first, protein after, I think. Okay. I think that's a, the policy. Okay. But not like load up. But if you want to have like yeah. a wrap, that sounds good. Yeah. I'm, I'm really worried about like being in the park and having to poop. Like. Okay. So guzzle your coffee and go before. I did go this morning. Do you think I'll have to go twice? It sounds like you're just worrying about stuff for the sake of it. Yeah. No. Also, like, where do I put my phone? Do I bring a water bottle? Like, I don't know how these things work. Well, some people, they have things where they put their phone, like a little fanny pack or, you know, an armband or something. Yeah, I think I need to level up and get like an armband. Or like a, an ankle thing. Or if you're wearing Lululemon leggings, they oh, have wait. those pockets. Wait, no, I'm wearing Reebok, but I thought I saw pockets. Hold on. The Lululemon ones have them like on the side of your leg. They're really good. You're right. You're right. But no, I'm wearing... Fuck. And you got to hang on to it so it can track your steps. Otherwise, what's the point? Oh, my God. Wait. Yeah, you're right. And I don't want to put it in my bra. Fuck, I don't think I have. You can always hold it. I feel like that's what yeah. most people do. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not feeling confident. I've that's never ran outside. That's why you're going to train. It's just a training session. Yeah. Let's take it slow. Baby steps. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thank you so much so much for listening to the toast the millennial morning show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through friday on youtube so if you're watching us on youtube please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up we're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found so on spotify itunes stitcher public radio i radio castbox all the places where if you listen to podcasts find us a toast leave a five star be a better beautiful setting and what can we tell you we are love ya bye